Hello everyone, my name is Joe Scorsano, the channel is called Ethernet Link. In today's video, we are going to continue with machine learning for the Quant Finance Advent, Advent of Code. It's episode 20, and uh, we're not going to waste much time. So this is my X account. If you guys want to get updates as soon as they come out, and you guys want to learn more about machine learning, I got a lot of things cooking up. Um, new product cooking up as well. That is a machine learning algorithm, but it's not your grandfather's machine learning algorithm. <laughs> no Mickey Mouse stuff around here. And then this is the current one that I have. If you guys want to find out more details about, about um, my X account or this thing I have with Luxago, more details will be in the description. But to start with the coding, because I know that's what you guys are here for, we have to implement a neural network from scratch. Use TANH as an activation function to predict positive or negative log returns and plot testing data to predictions. Cool. So if you guys are new around here, I figured that this one would get a few more people because, you know, neural networks. Um, so I have this cache and this get stock data. It's not the bulk of the video at all, but this will just return a data frame. And this is just, I have a whole other video about this, about why it could be cool to just have something like this in the background, especially for something that wouldn't just run and then it's done. It wouldn't, you know, stay up for a while. Regardless, we're just going to get the stock data for whatever tickers for this start and this end date. And then for every data frame that we have, we're going to get the log returns and drop our INA. Then we're going to get our log returns and then we're going to sequence them. Basically, you're going to split it up into an X and a Y. And the sequence function that's up here. So just for I and range of the length of um, length of data minus the sequence length, we're just going to go through and append data accordingly. And then once we have it split up into an X and a Y, then we're going to use the real thing, which is just to train test split our X and Y. I'm using the test size of 30 because I don't like overfit stuff. And then... Um, yeah, we have our X train, X test, Y train, Y test. So now we're going to reshape that, make sure that it doesn't blow anything up. Um, the shape of it is pretty much like how does the literal array look. So now we're going to scale our data as well. It is already a log return, but we're going to scale it just because it makes the output a little bit nicer. And then, yeah, we're going to get our neural network, train it, and do some predictions. So now with the reason, actually, let's talk about this first. Our input size is our train shape, the second train shape. And then we have a we have 32 neurons in the hidden layer, in each hidden layer, an output size of one and two hidden layers. And then we're just going to train it with our X train and Y train. Um, make sure that the shapes are correct. A thousand epochs, a thousand times we're going to train it. We're going to go through and backpropagate. And then we get our predictions, which is just a forward step. So now, if you guys are confused, you don't know what the hell is going on, that's okay because we coded this neural network from scratch, right? So we're going to go through and everything will make sense at the end of it. And we also have a learning rate, but I just set that to be a default value. Regardless though, let's go through and see what we're really doing. So weights and biases is a, um, <clears throat> is a list. So we're really just going to go through, initialize everything for the input layer with just random values. Biases can be zero, but weights have to be random. So that way we don't have a dead neuron. And so then, so that way when we actually do multiplication with the weights, it doesn't just end up being zero. It has to be a random number so that way we can converge to an actual value. And so for every hidden layer, we have to get a hidden layer. So just we're gonna do the same thing for hidden layer sizes. And then same thing for the output size, but the output has to be an output. So yeah, that is all. We're just kind of getting a bunch of lists of random data so that way when we actually go through and use it, we can change it all to have a different weight and a bias to get to the desired output that we want. It'll all make more sense when we actually look at the feed forward and the back propagation functions. So I'm using TANH because I haven't seen it used before online very much. I think it's a pretty useful one. Every single X that we put in here, once we run it through TANH, will be between negative one and one. So it's also very good for something like this because we're technically classifying. Right, if it's above one, it's bullish. If it's, I mean, if it's below, bleh. if it's above zero, it's bullish. If it's below zero, it's bearish. Regardless, though, let's go through and actually talk about how predictions are done in our neural network. Because I think that you guys can get it. I don't think it's that hard. Once you see it a bunch, right? If you if you don't know it, you don't know it. But I think that once you guys see it for a little bit, you play around with it, play around with it a bit. You try to break it. Do use different um, activation functions. I think it'll all, it'll, all, bleh, it'll all make sense. I can't talk to that. But so our feed forward function right here. This is really to just go through the neural network. And something I'm going to do, because I think that it'll help everybody with visualization, is that normally 
neural networks are shown like this, right? And then we have our hidden layers, right? And then it's all go to an output. And so now every thing is connected to each other. Now that's great. That's fine. That is how it works. But I don't think that it's the greatest form of visualizing it because it doesn't, these are columns, right? Well, would I, the way that I would rather see everything be visualized is they go down. Because when we actually loop through it, we're treating everything as a row. So now I'm going to do a few it's just so that way it'll look really good when I draw the next thing I'm about to draw. And so then just we're going to have one output. So now it ends up being like this. I think this is a way better way to visualize it. Because even when we go and we look through, for i in range num dot um, self dot hidden layers, and then we're gonna do the dot product with everything in that hidden layer and its bias, and then we're gonna use our activation function. But so now this looping, it's looping through all of our layers, and then every um, every neuron in the layer. So I think that it's just way way nicer to visualize it like okay we're on this layer so we're gonna go bang 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 as opposed to the traditional way when we're like we're on this layer so we're gonna go down 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 and we're gonna go you know i think it's just way better to visualize like this where we're like we're on row zero so we're gonna go through and we're gonna do it we're on row one so we're gonna go through and we're gonna do it that's just how i prefer to think about it and i think that um this is how i like to visualize it i haven't seen anybody else talk about visualizing this way so maybe it helped you i don't know if you think i'm a jackass for that you think i'm a jackass for it regardless we're back to the code so our feed forward is just to do that to step through every single neuron that we have so we're going to store our activations layer by layer and so now for i in range every hidden layer plus one you're going to dot product our act our last activation with its weight and plus its bias. And then we're going to activate that with our tan h function, append the activation, and then we're going to turn the last one because the last one, the last one is our output size. It might even make sense to, I just thought about this, to do something like that. But output size is not defined. Well, it would have to be self dot. But um, yeah, you would have to use this one. Bush league over here. But um, yeah, not important for now because we only want one output. It doesn't really make sense for us to have different ones. Regardless, though, this is our feed forward step. This is this is see what every single neuron is saying, activate it, and then store that. This is just a prediction. This is the prediction step. The prediction is calling this function. Does that make sense now? We're just stepping through it. In back propagation then we see how wrong we are, right? Because when we train, we have our output, we have our prediction. So now we can backprop with what our prediction is and what it should be. Does that make sense? Because we're predicting with something, we're predicting with this to get this. How wrong are we? That's what this is saying. We're predicting with this to get this. How wrong are we? Yeah, that is how it's saying. I just have the variables in different orders. So we're going to compute our output error. So this is what we want. This is what we said. How wrong are we? The delta is the, we're kind of going back from the tan h to see what we started with. So now we're going to multiply our error from what we started with to get that prediction. And then we're going to go backwards, right? So feed forward is stepping forward from the, is stepping forward through the neural network. Back propagation is starting at the end and we're going back to update it. So our deltas is again a delta product with um, whatever, del bleh, whatever delta we're at, the weights of um, the current neur neuron, and we're going to multiply that by what we started with, and then we're going to insert <coughs> um, we're going to insert at zero delta. Remember, because we're starting at the back, 
So we want to make sure that we still insert everything at delta correctly. And then we're going to um, update our weights and biases. So again, we're going to start at the, um, now we're starting at the beginning. And we're going to go through, and now we're going to update our weights and biases based on how wrong we are, based on our deltas. Right, so now this is our back prop. This is our step backwards, find out how wrong we are. This is our, now we're going to step forward and we're going to multiply and we're going to adjust our weights and biases because we have this learning rate and then we're going to dot product by our activations and our delta. This is where, this is what we have making decisions for us right now. This is how wrong we are. So now we're going to dot those together, multiply that by our learning rate. That's how we, and then we're going to add that to its weight. Because this delta should get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So now this change will be smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. In turn, all of this will be smaller and weight should converge to something that should give us the desired um, output. So we're getting a prediction, updating our parameters with that prediction. Because we're doing this, epochs is just like how many times do we want to train? So for every epoch, we're going to get output, and we're going to see how wrong we are, and then we're going to update it. So yeah, because we're using tanh, output is going to look a little funky, but it'll make sense. Because um, I haven't seen neural networks shown this way, the way that I haven't. Maybe it's to a fault, because a lot of new people are going to be like, what the hell is going on? And maybe it's good, because um, maybe someone will get a new idea. So yeah, this is our prediction. And this is our actual. So now let's take a look at 90, index 92 to 110, right? I don't have it as dates, but whatever. So now from this whole window, the neural, the neural network is predicting bullish. It's classifying this as bullish. And it did actually end up being it, but regardless. Actually, technically it didn't. <laughs> it will be wrong. But this is um, a way that I don't really see anybody talk about neural networks, and I don't know why. Because of course it'll be wrong. But you'll, you're going to be a little wrong the other way too. Like it's not, not, not no technique is going to be perfect. So I don't know, I like having something a little dynamic, because even over here, well this one was just not great, but um, right here we're lower, we're lower, we're lower, we're lower, we snap up as we cross over. Right, it is working with it even back here this is all getting predicted bullish after this after this move up here our prediction going up this is all getting predicted as bullish to a fault a little bit <laughs> right but but i think that this is a cool way to show neural networks and stuff like that because you could then feed new data into this and you'll just get a nice easy number to play with it'll either be here or here <laughs> And so then, um, and it'll also be in the middle. It's totally allowed to be in the middle. You guys could then, um, and you could also gauge it based off of a strength of correctness, right? Because you could use like color gradients and set it, set the bounds to be like the range is going to be from zero, from negative one to one. So like set my color to be from this, and then you could visualize how strong each prediction is. But um, yeah, that's how I am implementing a neural network from scratch for this. Um. I think it's a bit of a unique predict, um, imp implementation, but I think it's an implementation nonetheless. I think it's a cool one. I think that if you're, I think that someone brand new to this could understand backpropagation now. It's just a scary word. We're basically going through and we're making predictions, but we know what we want to predict. So we're going through, we have output from something that we know what we want because when we go through and train, we're training based off of x and y and then we can um, just see how wrong we were and update weights and biases accordingly and then we'll get an output like that so yeah you could also modify this to have print statements in here to tell you what your loss is um i didn't really feel like doing that but yeah this is um how i implemented a neural network from scratch for this series we're gonna build on this i want to make this funky I want to make this weird. I want to have like a recurrent neural network and a deep reinforcement model. So kind of like a penalty and a reward because I've never worked with them before. I'm not going to promise that though, because I wanted to code LSTM from scratch. 
and I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm just, there's just no, there's no way I'm doing that just for a YouTube video, really. Just for something that I want to keep under 20 minutes. You know what I mean? Like if, if it was going to be like a two hour video or something like that, I wouldn't mind it. But even that, I'm on break, dude. I want to play guitar. <laughs> I'll play guitar, have a workout, you know? Maybe, maybe not. Um, XG Boost is going to be another one. Because again, really scary thing, but it handles a lot of stuff for us. But yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. This code is going to be in the GitHub repo in the description. And yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next video. So goodbye.